effortless PostgreSQL backups with a user-friendly web interface. Hello and what's up guys, Medium Guy here and in this video we're going to deploy an application that will handle all our needs for backing up from a Postgres database. So this is an easy to use tool, as much easy as it is to deploy this in a Docker container. So without any delay, let's get down to work. So as you can see, I'm in the GitHub repository for this tool. And if I scroll down over here, we can find a Docker Compose file to deploy the PG back web service alongside with a demo Postgres container to actually test this out. So in order to implement this, I've created a Docker Compose file, which also includes two containers, one being the latest version of the PG back web image and the other is a Postgres Alpine image. So I've exposed a port to outside the container, which is 8085 to 8085 inside the container and also I've mapped a dot slash backups directory to slash backups inside the container so actually the backup jobs that I'll define in the PG back web service will be actually using the slash backups to store the backup files so later I'll be able to access those backup files in the dot slash backups directory so later I'll get to decide what do I do with these backup files Files. So you can pass environment variables like encryption key and the Postgres connection string. So actually the PG back web can connect to this Postgres instance on the PG back web database to store its data like for example backup definitions, the database connections and things like that. And next over here I've got a simple Postgres container which has the environment variables for user and database and password and a port map to the outside so it'll be accessible from the outside network. So if I hit Control X to exit the nano and I'll try to make the dot slash data directory and dot slash backups directory that I've mapped to inside the containers. So I'll hit LS and now I have my setup done. I'll hit docker compose op dash D so both my containers are up and running. Also a network has been created attaching these two containers to that network. So actually these two containers can see each other through their service names. So if I hit docker compose ps, I'll see that the status for the both containers are running. So as a result, if I go to the browser, hit the address of the server and on port 8085, I'll be able to access the web interface of the PG back web. So because it is the first use, it'll try to create a username. So I'll try to pass in my information and hit the create user and continue button over here. So it says the user is created and right now by using the credentials that I passed, I can do login to inside the PG back web service. So in the summary page, you can see the steps to create our database connections and the destinations and backup definitions. And lastly, wait for the executions to create the backup files in the defined destinations. So on the databases, I'll try to create a database connection, but first I'll try to execute inside the Postgres container to create a database and create a table and put some data in that. So I'll be able to check the backup and restoration working correctly. So I'll say docker exec, dash it the name of the container and the sh as the command to be executed inside the container so i'll hit enter and right now i'm inside the postgres container if i say psql dash u postgres dash h localhost i'll hit enter and right now i'm inside the postgres server so if i hit backslash l this will try to list all the databases and if I say create database, I'll provide a name, I'll hit enter and the database is created. So right now I'll try to create a table and insert some data. So actually I've got a hint right over here. I'll try to cat the hint.sh. 
and again go back inside the container and by hitting backslash c the name of my database i can connect to the exact same database that i want to create my table so i'll copy this query over here and i'll hit enter and you can see that my table is created and lastly i'll try to insert some rows in the created table so i'll paste that and hit enter and if i say select star from users you can see that the three rows has been successfully inserted in this table so i'll go back to the web interface over here i'll provide a name for the database and choose the version of my postgres server that i want to create backups from and over here i'll try to paste the connection string so i'll change the database name to the database that i want to make backups from so if i hit test connection i can see that the pgback web is successfully connected to the database and if i hit save i can see that the database connection is successfully saved right over here so on the destination section you can define s3 compatible storages like minio or amazon itself which is not the thing that i'll try to do because i want to save my backup files locally on my local storage so on the backup section i'll try to create a new backup job i'll name this job as my database name and here i can choose the database connection that i defined on the database section so it is asking if this is a local backup or a s3 object storage so i'll choose yes and next i can define the cron expression by which you can define the interval for the job to be executed so if i provide five stars it will mean that this job will execute on every minute so you can define expressions to execute this backup on exact hours of each day or each month so i'm not gonna go too deep in the cron expressions and actually i want this job to be executed each minute so i can show in this video so you can choose your time zone i'll set to the utc and it won't actually differ because this is going to be run each minute and over here i'll pass slash backups as the destination directory that i want my backups to be stored in it also i can set retention days i'll pass 10 days to keep my backup files and delete after 10 days and lastly over here we've got options to provide for the backup command that will be used to create backup files i'm going to let the default values and not make any changes so i'll hit save over here you can see that my backup job is created and right now on the executions i should see the backup executions each minute and the status of each execution so i'll wait a minute to see if my backup is created successfully or not so after waiting a minute you can see that i have a successful execution over here and if i hit the show details button i can see some details about the execution itself so i can download the files and also delete the file and right now if i go to the server i'll hit ls i'll try to go to the backups directory and you can see that it creates the relevant paths on the day of execution and if i hit ls over here you can see that the dump file is created as a zip file also if i try to unzip the backup file you can see that it has a .sql file and if i hit nano domp.sql you can see that it is a sql file and you can actually move this file to anywhere and restore it manually or also using the same tool so right now i'm going to try the restoration so i'll try to execute back inside the postgres container and again i'll try to connect to the database that i'm creating the backups from so here i'll try to drop the table users that i created and if i hit 
backslash dt, you can see that there are no tables in this database. So I'll go back to the web interface on the executions. I'll hit refresh and I can see that already four backups have been created. So I'll try to restore from the first backup Then I'm sure it includes the table and the records inside that table. So I'll hit restore button and here I'll choose the existing database and choose my database as the destination to the restoration function. So I'll hit start restoration, I'll hit OK, and you can see that the restoration has been done successfully. So on the restoration section over here, I can see that the status for the restoration is successful. And also again, if I go back over here, I'll hit backslash DT, you can see that the users table has now successfully restored and if i hit select star from the users table i've got my records back in the users table so this is actually a handy tool and very easy to use and actually you don't have to go through all the complexity of creating backups and managing and and stuff like that and by using this tool and making some connections and backup executions you can easily backup from your postgresql servers so that's all for this video i hope you learned something new in this one if you have any questions any recommendations of course go ahead and ask me in the comment section down below and lastly don't forget to like and subscribe which will help grow the channel and motivate me to create more contents like this so lastly thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next videos